There's an old saying that a grown man remembers the bread of his childhood. Fortunate, then, the children of today who are enjoying tasty bread. What a delicious memory they'll have. Fragrant, richly delicious, delicately textured, snowy white, tasty bread is a masterpiece of the baker's art. It takes constant effort, careful daily testing of all ingredients to keep it up to the same high standards. The bakers of this famous loaf are determined that whenever you buy tasty, you will get the best loaf of bread in town. The Tasty Bread Winners, directed by Ben Selvin, Harry DeCosta at the piano, and here they are, Billy Jones and Ernie Hare, the Tasty Loafers. How do you do, everybody? How do you do? Though we're known as Jones and Hare to all of you. We're two loafers now, it's said, representing Tasty Bread. How do you do, 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 do? How do you do? How do you do? How do you do, 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 do? I'm Billy Jones. I'm Ernie Hare, and we're a silly-looking pair. How do you do, 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 Say, Bill, what's the idea of all the acrobatics you're doing, ducking your head and kicking up your heels? You're acting like you're crazy. Uh, can you imagine that, Ernie? It's, it's a fly flying around here, bothering the life out of me. Oh, a fly bothering you, yeah. Do you want me to shoot it? No, no, don't bother. Let him run around on his bare feet, Ernie. <laughs> hey, look at it. Look at it. It's an awful big fly, too. It, it looks like a horse fly. Well, what's a horse fly doing flying around me, I Well, think? it's pretty hard to fool those horse flies, you know. <laughs> We're acquainted with a loving pair, and once a year he'll kiss her and say, dear, I'm going to be home early today, dear. It is quite important, I declare, so let's dress for dinner tonight. We've been married just a year tonight. We can call the Joneses and we'll all go together, so let's dress for dinner tonight. We'll do the evening in style. First we'll dine and dance a little while. Then we'll go and see the show and hold hands together. Oh, we'll do the evening in style. At 12 o'clock we'll disappear. We'll both pretend we're very tired, dear. I'm sure the folks will pardon us. For after all, there's lots of things that mean to discuss. Let's dress for dinner tonight. Spend a second honeymoon tonight. We should celebrate this great occasion together. So let's dress for dinner tonight. Let's dress for dinner tonight. We've been married just a year tonight. We can phone the Joneses and we'll all go together. So let's dress for dinner tonight. We'll do the evening in style. First we'll dine and dance a little while. Then we'll go and see a show and hold hands together. Or we'll do the evening in style. At 12 o'clock we'll disappear. We'll both pretend we're very tired, dear. I'm sure the folks will pardon us. For after all, there's lots of things we must discuss. Let's dress for dinner tonight. Spend a second honeymoon tonight. We should celebrate this great occasion together. So let's dress for dinner tonight. Say, Bill, look at you. Look at how you you look. Look at that tie. It's all frayed. Uh, it isn't frayed. It's frightened, Ernie. Yeah, and that collar. Your collar you have What's on. the matter with the collar? Oh, what? why, why, it's about each size is too big for you. You you look as though you're rehearsing for a goiter. Oh, no. And look at that suit. And look at the way you're standing. Well, I have to stand this way to make the suit fit me, Ernie. Oh, I see. Are you going to pick on me all night long? No, not if you lend me a nickel, Bill. What do you want a nickel for? Well, I want to call up a friend while you're singing your song. Well, here's a dime. Go call up all your friends. Thank you. Surrender. This 
around us. They weave a spell around us. A sweet romance has found us at last. Let's wake up and dream of love. And let me hold you while love dreams come Yeah, here's a nickel change. I, I couldn't get my other friend. Uh, <laughs> By the way, Ernie, we made an arrangement between us not to use the telephone in our office for anything but business. You oh, know? yeah, I know we did, and I never use it for anything else but business, Bill. Yes, you did today, Ernie. Yeah, when? And hereafter, hereafter, on all business calls, don't address the party as sweetheart, will you? Oh, oh Bill, that was business. Very important to me. It was my wife. Uh-huh. You know, you fellas all are coming to my house to dinner tomorrow, and <laughs> I called my wife to ask her what she was going to serve. What did she say she was going to serve? Oh, a bunch of bums. <laughs> Don't mind her, though. She's always clowning. Now, yeah. wait just a minute. I'm afraid I'll have to stop you loafers from clowning. Here's a real treat. Our guest, Edith Murray, favorite of radio and theater audiences, sings us, I Hate Myself. <laughs> Like lean, 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 my anymore. Broke your heart and let you go. Hate myself for being so mean to you. I can slap my face saying the things I said. I can bite my tongue saying the things I said. Oh, send myself a telegram. Tell myself what a fool I am. Hate myself for being so mean to you. Oh, baby, do come back. If you come back, I'll never make you cry. But stay away another day, kiss myself goodbye, go to hide myself down in the deep, deep blue, yes sir, cause I hate myself for being so mean to you. How sad am I, ain't that a shame, I'm on a blame, my guilty conscience driving me insane, what we do, is I hate myself for being so mean to you. Like an enemy, meanly, mighty mo, broke your heart, let you go. It must have been so mean to you. I slap my face saying the things I said. I could bite my tongue saying the things I said. Gonna send myself a telegram, tell myself what a fool I am. Hate myself for saying things I said. Oh, baby, do come back, yes, if you come back. I'll never make you cry, but stay away another day. We did it well, well, hide myself way down in the deep, deep blue. Yeah, cause I hate myself for being so mean. I know that I could be so mean to you. Every housewife inspects every food product she intends putting upon the table. Tasty Bread is called the best loaf of bread in town because the most thorough inspection finds every loaf the same. Not a flaw can be detected. Say, listen, Lou, if a flaw could be detective, I know one detective who could detect it. He handled uh, the most difficult cases. For instance, a man was shot and a knife was found beside him. Who do you think poisoned him? Who, Ernie? Nobody. He hanged himself. (laughs) Ha, ha, ha. Is this a private confab, or can anyone get into it? Certainly, Edith. Come on right in. What's on your mind? Well, Mr. Whitten seems so good-natured. Perhaps he'd answer a question for me. Well, of course I will, providing I can. What's your problem, Edith? Can you tell me why they call some radio programs asthmatic broadcasts? Well, now I've heard them called many other things, but never an asthmatic broadcast. Do you know why, Edith? Sure, because they're so full of wheezes. (laughs) 
Oh, say, Bill, I'm sure glad we have Edith on the program with us. She certainly can dig them up, can't she? That wheeze of Edith has certainly made this an asthmatic broadcast, thank you. But our listeners can breathe easy because tasty bread is always good. Yes, sirree, tasty bread is good. But getting back to that asthmatic wheeze, I have an asthmatic riddle. Yeah? Tell me, what kind of tubes do residents of the Bronx use in their radio? Any objection to me answering that question? Uh Uh-oh, Ben's in again, Bill. Uh, uh, Let him answer the question, Lou. All right, Ben. You can't hurt the program now. First, the man hangs himself, and then for no good reason at all, we become asthmatic. Well, this program would be perfect if we were all in short pants, asthmatically speaking. Oh! Go ahead, Ben. Well, you see, the tubes used in a Bronx radio are bronchial tubes. Am I right, Bill? No, but uh, we let it pass. Uh, how did you happen to think of that? It's food for thought. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah, but tasty bread is food for everybody. I, I beat you to it, didn't I, Lou? Yes, you did, Ernie, but you're forgiven. And I hope I'm forgiven for this one. If that song Mr. Jones sang, you know, Wake Up and Dream, well, if that song is a wall and the house is haunted as a fox trot, what is bread in old Kentucky? I give up. Do you know, Lou? No. Do you know, Ernie? No. Say, Ben, do you know what bread in old Kentucky is? No, but wait a minute. I'll ask the band. Hey, fellas, do you know what bread in old Kentucky is? No! Well, nobody seems to know, Edith. You tell us. All right. Bread in old Kentucky is 11 cents a loaf. Because my mother came from there. (laughs) Yeah, and so did old man Jingle. Ben, music, please, quick. Yeah. 